All right. In just a moment, we're going to have a look at Mark Breland. Welterweight competition against the veteran Hedgemon Robertson. For knockouts. Going eight straight today against Hedgemon Robertson of Los Angeles. Robertson is 21-5-1. and one. Mark Breland's first pro fight was a six-round decision over Dwight Williams. And Mark heard some hooting. There had been a lot of hype around Breland, and the public had expected, I guess, a more dramatic beginning. Actually, Breland's first three fights were six-round decisions as a pro, mainly because he had to go back to the drawing board to relearn some of the basics. He had won as an amateur with flaws, but he had to make some changes to make it as a pro. And against Don Shiver, July this year, Breland showed some crushing power in a first-round knockout. And in October this year, a fourth straight KO win, stopping Donald Gwynn in the second round. I asked Mark Breland to assess his progress as he goes into his eighth professional fight. Well, I feel I'm at the point to fight someone um, with the caliber of Edmund Robinson. Um, I've been progressing a lot. I've been working a lot on my boxing and my balance. And not mainly a lot of power, just I've been trying to work on a lot of um, balance so that I can use my power effectively. You've got an advantage here, of course, in height and reach. Yeah, that's something you're probably going to have in most instances at your weight. Uh, um, you haven't really been in a brawl yet. Robertson is liable to brawl you a little. Well, um, that's where my jab comes in at. I uh, have to use it very effective in the fight. I uh, do a lot of moving. Uh, I've seen a few tape. well, I've seen a tape of him. He's not much of a mover. He comes right at you. So um, a lot of lateral movement, not too much dancing, but a lot of sticking a jab at him. And now the introductions for our final fight today. Ladies Dr. Roger Coffin. and gentlemen. of boxing in the welterweight division. The participants in the red corner, wearing purple trunks with the white trim. He weighs 144 pounds. He hails from Los Angeles, California, Hedgeman Robertson. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with the black trim. He weighs 148 pounds. He hails from Brooklyn, New York. The winner of the gold medal at the Los Angeles Olympics, Mark Breland. There's your tale of the tape. 11 years difference. Well, does 11 years of experience offset the youth, the height, the reach. I frankly doubt it. But still, for Hedgemon Robertson, all of that experience and the record of 21-5-1 and one gives him a reservoir of cutting on which to draw and provide more seasoning for Mark Breland. One of these days, one of these Olympians is going to get whacked. But I frankly don't think this is where it's going to happen. If Robertson were stockier and perhaps a more of a brawler, this might be the kind of a, an opponent that could give Mark Breland some trouble. But he's not. His pattern of boxing is, is that of a, a jab and a following right. He is not a brawler. Breland, on the other hand, like Tyrell Biggs, learning to put all four knuckles on the target. He had to go back to the basics. We said that a moment ago in the uh, piece of videotape we showed. But he was able with his power, his height, his range, and his reach, and his quickness, he was able to win in the amateur ranks with those flaws. But when he turned professional, he had to go back to the beginning. He had to get rid of it. They're using 
Ten ounce gloves, three judges. The referee does not score. The referee is Al Rothenberg. Incidentally, something of a celebrity himself around this part of the country. Retired commander, U.S. Navy. 21 years as a Navy pilot and one of the first of the, uh, uh, the Navy jet pilots. And a whole drawer full of medals. Five air, two distinguished flying crosses, silver star, and a Navy cross. I'll push off. I was right on the belt line by uh, Robertson. But right now, it's, uh, it's Breland. The taller, the ranger, the younger. Slid away from that uh, right hand by Hedgemon Robertson. Of course, many of you, I'm sure, remember there was another Hedgemon uh, out of the Los Angeles area, a pretty good fighter named Hedgemon Lewis. This is Robertson. Lewis is retired. Though so they are cousins, I understand, distant cousins. Watch your heads now. Watch your heads, gentlemen. The left hand, straight left, when it's extended by Breland, hurts. No, Very don't spin him around. Punch. Don't spin him around. 20 seconds to go, round one. The right was just a half an inch short. Just barely short. But it was set up perfectly, and had it landed, it might have been real trouble. It's going to be interesting to see now what happens with Hedgemon Robertson. I can frankly say to you in, in good honest truth that the young he was intimidated when he came into this ring against Mark Breland and why wouldn't he be with all the hype that swirls around Breland everywhere he goes though Mark does not particularly covet it he realizes it's part of the marketing and the mystique that goes with someone who's going to be successful in sport these days but Robertson without question was intimidated by it but will he continue to be as time wears on? As time wears on, I would think the confidence factor would swing over to Robertson's side. Pretty hard for a man 5'8 to get through that forest of arms and flashing hands from a man 6'2. And that's the problem that Hedgeman Robertson's got. He's 5'8 and Breland 6'2. Breland setting himself now, and uh, Mark loading up that right hand. Robertson uh, gets a little bit stationary in front of him, and Breland loads up like that, and that was a wicked shot to the body by Mark Breland. Uh, Edgemont can't afford to stand there in front of him and let him load up. We'll knock him into next week. Alert our local stations along the way. At the end of this round, we will take a station break. Robertson better get out of there. The body shot by Hedgeman was picked off by Breland's elbow. Well, Robertson got one into the face of Breland that time as Marks was tentative with the right and left himself available. Fight out, that's it, fight out. Closing seconds now of round two. Quick right hand by Breland. We'll have more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this word from our local station. Round three. And the first 10 seconds of round three shows the same pattern we saw in round two. 
One of the things that Hedgeman Robertson must be wary of, though, is what he lapsed into for just a moment there in the second round, and that's getting too stationary in front of Breland. Incidentally, uh, Sweet Pea Whitaker, Pernell Whitaker, lightweight, uh, one of the very attractive uh, and certainly one of the promising young fighters out of the Olympic champions of 84, was originally scheduled to be part of this program as a right hand by Robertson, and it just almost got Breland right on the jaw, but Mark turned away at the last fraction and escaped most of it. But Pernell broke a bone in his foot, and he's just now back into some heavy training, but he is to be married here in this ring when all the fighting is done for the day. All right, that's it. Right hand by Breland, two right hands by Breland. Once again, Robertson got a little stationary. We were kidding him earlier today about uh, getting married in the ring. He's, he's, his bride is Rwanda Anthony. And uh, Sweet Pea says, ain't gonna be no 10 rounder. Breland goes hard to the body, comes back to the head, back to the body by Breland. Robertson trapped in the corner. So far, unwilling to brawl his way out of it. He needs to get out of there. Breland now really picketed. Long left. Breland loading the right hand, threw it, just missed with it. Robertson at 33, still crafty and still quick. But the power of Breland is going to wear on him. Schedule for eight, we're in round three. Right hand lead followed by the quick left. And once again, Robertson's in dangerous territory. He's in the corner. Hard to the body, hard to the head. Double to the head. Wolfhole, wicked left of the body by Breland. You can feel that all the way to the end of Hampton Road. And now, Rob Robertson's in some trouble. Edgemont Robertson's in trouble. And Breland is just measuring him in the corner. Mark comes back with a hard right and slams him back into the ropes. And Hedgemont Robertson walks away from it. And let's have a look at him as he goes into the corner and see what kind of shape he's in. Because he took some punishment in that third round. Let's put a little more pressure on But he seems to be all right to watch the fight. Incidentally, that ball game Monday night, the Raiders are the uh, AFC Western Division champions, and the Rams are the NFC Western Division champions. And, of course, it matches up two of the celebrated running backs in all of football today, Eric Dickerson of the Rams and Marcus Allen of the Raiders. Okay, Robertson comes off the bench, looks all right, and immediately gets ripped with the right to the body by Breland and is lifted off the floor, literally by the right, and then clubbed with the left to the side of the head. This is round four. I'll say one thing for Hedgeman Robertson. If, in fact, he was hurt at the end of the third round, he covered it very well. That's the best point of the fight right there by Robertson, but it was a countering right hand following a right to the body by Breland. And you could hear that one in Richmond. Breland, like Biggs, like Taylor, like Hollyfield, all headed for 10 rounders from here on. Until they get themselves in title challenging posture. Hi, Don. That's it. Keep going. Biggs won today. Beating Tony Anthony. Holyfield defeated uh, Anthony Davis. Biggs was a first round knockout. 
Holyfield to three. And Medrick Taylor, an eight-round decision over Victor Acosta. Now we're watching Mark Breland in the gold trunks against Hedgeman Robertson. That run out of Los Angeles in the blue. came in very close for a look and he didn't see enough to cause him to call a standing eight so Hedgemont Robertson is one tough dude not a question of whether or not Mark Freeland can punt we know Freeland can punt I feel but we didn't know that Robertson was that resilient that tough we heard the question to him as he came back to his corner. Are you all right? How do you feel? You're all right. He nodded his head and didn't say anything. Seemed perfectly composed. But watch this barrage. As it left right, this was following a series of, of body shots, more to the body by Breland. Right hand over the top, right hand on an eighth, left hook to the head. I mean, some of those things are downtowners. But Robertson weathered the storm and walked away from it. Gotta stay. Gotta stay. Gotta keep him it seems fairly fresh. Maybe you can punch. Well, I don't think you need to be telling Hedgemont Robertson that Freeland uh, can punch. Up. I think that's abundantly clear by now. But Hedgemont is right there. Got a little bit of a mouse under his right eye. left hand stabbed in there by Hedgemont Robertson. A right hand by Robertson. Stop holding. Stop pushing. Come on. Braylon now getting close enough so that Robertson is beginning to throw some punches that are landing. And as we suggested earlier, as Time wore on, confidence factor might swing over toward Robertson. I don't know, maybe Breland has a has something in mind. Maybe he wants to work. I, I don't know, but I, I don't see any particular indication that he's he's gonna waste himself trying for a, a knockout to please the crowd. We noted earlier that the first three fights Breland had were all distance decision fights. He's unmarked so far. He really hasn't been hit. There's a left and a right. And uh, neither one of them seem to have any impact on it. And he's obviously in total control of circumstances right now. That's over his neck. That's over his neck. That's it. Mark Breland trying for his eighth straight win, fighting Hedgemon Robertson in the fifth round. Fighting Olympians with Tyrell Biggs right, winning it, the it, first it, round it, knockout of it, Tony it, Anthony today. Third round knockout for Evander Holyfield over Anthony Davis. Actually, fourth round, 37 seconds. All the damage was done at the end of the third round. And then uh, Melvin Taylor defeated uh, Victor Acosta. And though uh, Mark Breland has dominated this fight against Robertson. Robertson is still right there in front of him. Hedgemont at 33 years of age, 22 years the age for Mark Breland. More hype around Mark Breland than any of the other Olympians. Don't do that.
Freeland trying, trying to load the right hand. But we go to round six. Schedule for eight. Welterweights, Mark Freeland, gold trunks. Edgemont Robertson, blue trunks. Robertson, 21, 5, and 1 with 19 knockouts. Mark Freeland, of course, 7 and 0 as a professional. Got a small problem. He didn't hit back there. He Edgevon didn't hit back Robertson there. Strokes have split. That's why that tape is there. I say that for our director Larry Kim is judicious cutting of his pictures. Freeland again loaded the right hand and just missed with it. But that left is always there, isn't it? Always in the face of the long-armed Mark Freeland. He weighs 148 pounds. He weighed that yesterday. It's give or take a pound in these competitions. But uh, he stands 6'2", and his, his reach is 77 and a half inches. Six and a half inches more than Robertson, who stands 5'8". And I'll say this, Mark Breland is using that reach today. He's using all of it. And seemingly not discouraged by the fact that he has, uh, has not stung Robertson. That's a, more of a slap than a blow there as he wings it. From out of left field. That ain't gonna hurt anybody. Oh, it's wild. Oh, it goes oh, crashing into the right ropes. And he lost his tape. Let's go. Needs a new pair of shorts. Two good right hand. Go hold him, go wrestling, go wrestling, let go, that's it. Coming to the end of round six. And Robertson is starting to come on a little more. Hold it. All right, let's go. Watch it, man. Mark Breland is in control of the fight, no question about that. It would take a knockout by Robertson to salvage a decision here. He can't get a decision. He's got to knock him out. But the point is that Mark Breland has it in control. Watch down the road. Well, I, I talked to him yesterday. He says he's in no hurry. And he thinks he will know when he is physically and emotionally ready to make the big move. Of course, from here he goes to 10 rounders. The welterweight division right now, kind of interesting in that. So many of the welterweights are talking about moving on up to junior middleweight. Of course, you saw, many of you, I'm sure, what happened when Donald Curry and Milt McCrory got together. The general feeling seems to be that Milt may not fight that much more. And Curry uh, was quick to voice interest in moving up to the next category, though both uh, McCrory and the Curry had no trouble coming back down to a 147 weight for their unification fight. But if McCrory should uh, decide he's not enough, and he may not fight more than a couple of more years. All right, fight out and of it, Curry fight out of it, let's go, up. keep going, that's it. Then Mark Breland's in pretty good shape. In a couple of years, to have a title opportunity, would seem to me. That left hook Robertson reached for that time came up short. We hit the pass, go past the halfway point of round number seven. Come on, keep fighting, keep fighting, don't hold. Don't hold, that's it. That's it. Gotta believe that Hedgemont Roberts is gonna have a sore body when this is over, because Breland has really been pounding on. Sore 
sore all over. Left to the body, right to the head, right to the head. All by Breland. Mark, though, with the body attack, has really not been able to bring that defense down. Edgman is doggedly hung to his tactics. That's all Breland at the bell. And once again, Hedgeman Robertson absorbs it, skips a little as he goes back to his corner. And uh, one man stands in front talking to him, another man works with him with the water. A third man uh, hastens to repair one more time the torn pants. I hate to make such an issue of that because I'm sure now you've started watching for it, right? Looking into the corner of Mark Breland, no particular concern. George Benton is up there, Lou Duva standing in front of him. Not a whole lot of conversation, actually. Go, go, go. I'm glad to get close to you, okay? All right? The guy's gonna be right there in front of you, baby. Come on. Let's go with two hands up high. You can hit him the hook on the side and hook on top every time, right? Come on, you're doing terrific. Nobody seems particularly concerned that we're going into the eighth round. Come on. Because the fight has been the sole property of Mark Breland. Touch gloves. Touch. No swinging. Touch gloves. Separate. Let's go. Robertson, the crafty, tough veteran. Going eight. And on the other hand, the youngster Breland at all near 22 against the old pro going eight. And it has been Breland's fight. He has been utterly dominant. He went to a towel this time to resolve the, the social problem. Don't do that anymore. Stop swinging him. Stop swinging him around like that. Don't do it. Right hand hard shot to the ribs by Breland. A lot of Breland's punches that sting you okay, are short on, punches. Out of it, out Despite the fact he has those long arms and stands 6'2, he still manifests a tremendous amount of velocity and leverage in short blows. said yesterday he has no interest in fighting 20 years. Put the money in the bank. Takes a left to the side of the head that time. That one got his attention. Robertson isn't gone. He's still standing right there in front of him. And he just whacked him upside the head. Again, that right hand to the body by Breland, but now Robertson wings him with another left hook. Breland now willing to get in close enough where Hedgemont Robertson can reach him. Throws a long lead right hand that connects on the side of the head. Breland this time stops Robertson with a short right hand coming in. So Hedgemont Robertson is closing with perhaps his best round of the fight. As Breland, so in control of it, seemingly relaxed for a moment. After a minute of this round, and now it's Robertson winging away at it. Hard right hand to the side of that Breland's head by Robertson. And he's going to carry this one to the limit. left to the body dug by Robertson a wild right hand misses and the bell and the fight is over 
Robertson's best round, the closing round. So he improved from round five on. And we'll have the official decision for you in just a moment. Now with the decision, let's join Roger Ladies Coffin. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge number one scores at 79-73. Judge number two scores at 79-73. Judge number three scores at 79-72 in favor of the Olympic gold medalist, Mark Freeland. mystery uh, in the decision I'm sure that you expected if you've watched all eight of the rounds that it would be a unanimous decision again the scoring was 79 73 by two of the judges the third judge 79 72 and Mark Breland continues undefeated winning his eighth and we'll have a visit with the young man from Brooklyn in just a moment. News Saturday over many of these stations coming up shortly with Kathleen Sullivan. Right now, just a quick moment to visit with Mark Breland, who's immediately gone to an ice bucket with a sore right hand after a very tough fight. Oh yeah, I knew he was going to be pretty tough. What I based on what I basically was concentrating on is a lot of boxing, using my jab effectively, and. Um, I was using very stiff jabs and I was hurting my hands, but I said no matter what happens, I got to win this fight. Well, Mark, good luck to you. I hope you haven't done any damage to that hand and no, all just the best. Luck. I threw a lot of hard punches and he was ducking down okay. and I was catching the top of his head a lot of times. Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. Same to you. Mark Breland. Three titles, three champions. WB.